Hey, everybody, Troy here. Welcome to video 10 of our PowerShell Fundamentals series in which we are going to sort, select, and group objects using, you guessed it, the sort object commandlet, the select object commandlet, and wait for it, the group object commandlet. We're going to use these three, three, these three commandlets here to make our PowerShell pipeline a bit more specific. We're now getting to the spot where we can actually make more sophisticated pipelined commandlets to give us very specific data and pull information out that we may want as we carry through our PowerShell objectives. What I'm going to do is start off with my ISE. Okay, so let's look at a fairly common one. Let's start off with, uh, let's say, get process. Okay, great. So I've got a whole list of information here. Now this is, we've seen this per this one loads of times, but what if I wanted to find something about more specific, let's say my paged memory. Okay, now what is PM? Well, I know that if I didn't know what page memory was off the top of my head, I could pipe that to my fine friend, get member, and I would know that PM stands for paged memory size 64. So what we're talking about is the amount of uh, space this particular process is taking on my disk in the paged memory file. Awesome. What I'm gonna do now though is get the, I wanna sort it by, I wanna sort it by the one that's taking the most space. So let's do this and let's see. Now that's tricky. I would have to do this manually. Obviously, I want the I want say the top ones in order. Well, I'm gonna have to manually take a look. I see a 22, I see a 15, but 264 not helping me. So hence the need for my friend the commandlet called sort object. Well, this is a pipe command. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed the information coming out of get process and I'm gonna pass it over to sort object. Okay, now get help on sort object would say yes, it does indeed receive input from different service classes or different object types. And sort objects lets me use a variety of parameters, including the property. So what I want to do here is sort get process, the results of get process according to the property that is called paged memory. And a tab complete verifies that I actually have that property in play. And if I hit the enter key, you can see that it has resorted this information here for me, starting with paged memory, starting with lowest and incrementally going to the highest, looking at the last one, this OBS 64, which is taking up all my space. Now, if I wanted to go top to bottom instead of lowest to highest, what I would have to do is look at different parameters. So you see that if I carry through and I start looking at uh, my IntelliSense here, you can see, oh, I've got a descending switch property here, a switch parameter. Perfect, let's do this again. Let's see, yes, and that in fact did exactly what I wanted to do. It reset that list starting with the highest, uh, the highest uh, service or process rather, and then decrease from there. So by default, sorting goes in ascending order and I can add a switch parameter to change that default. Terrific. So you can see that I can sort by a variety of things. Let's do another, let's do another one here because I can actually sort by multiple properties at the same time. Let's go take a look at my services. Okay, I'm gonna hit a, a get service and you see I've got a series of, of service. Some are stopped and some are running. Okay, all of these are a status. Okay, so all of these service objects are either in one state or another. They are either running or they are stopped. That's what's going on, that is the status. What if I wanted to sort these by status to isolate all the ones that are stopped and all the ones that are running? Well, I'm gonna do that with a quick little up arrow and let's pipe this to sort object. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm actually using the full form syntax and what I'm gonna do is select a property called status. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sort these services based on that property. Uh, hit enter, terrific. And now you can see that all the stopped ones were grouped together and all the running ones 
were grouped together. Terrific. Here's the problem though. If I were trying to find a particular subset within stopped, maybe I want these names to be alphabetized or the display name to be alphabetized. Okay, well, let's let's do that. I'm going to sort it. Again, I'm going to sort it by status, but this time I want to subsort it on name. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick little up arrow and let's go status and name. What that means is that these are going to sort the property according to um, the uh, according to running or stopped, and then the second consideration is the name. And you can see that yes, indeed, it took the name property, and once it sorted sta the status, it subsorted alphabetically by name. That's my default ascending order. Terrific. That does correspond largely with the display name, display name, thankfully, but that was the property that I selected. So I could sort in multiple ways as well, provided they're all going to stick with the ascending status. That's awesome. So you can see how I can pipe information to sort object to adjust the information and establish a list in a much more specific way. Let's say I'm going to pipe this to another commandlet here. So what I'm going to do now is let's go back to that commandlet that I used with get process. So I've used the get process to sort by the property page memory, top to bottom, descending order. So biggest to smallest. I'm going to add another pipe here where I can use the select object command. Okay. So select object equally lets me select properties. But one of the first things that um, that I want to take a look at here is my first. This particular parameter lets me say, give me the first 10. So if I were to say, want to find the top 10 most resource intensive processes running on my computer right now by paged memory, I could get, all, get a list of processes and sort those by prop page memory size, top to bottom with descending, and then take that list and select the first 10. Let's see what happens when I do that. There we go. So you can see that was successful. Now I have the top 10 most resource intensive processes on my computer as determined by page memory. Now, I could also do the last 10. I could do all sorts of different things. But select, op select object actually is a bit more specific than that. I could say, not only do I want the first 10, I could say that, but only give me the property. Oh, see, I need first 10 rather. But give me the property. Uh, I only want the process name followed by the page memory, the PM. Okay, so you see by my tab complete, I'm confirming that what I've got, but I've only selected two of the standard default properties that PowerShell normally gives me. So you can see that what I've done here is I've broken away from the default configuration and I have selected only two properties, the process name and the page memory. Look at the difference though. Page memory up here is measured in kilobytes. Down here, it's measured in bytes. Now, that's because this default configuration in the table, it is performing an adjustment for us. So PowerShell is trying to make that, um, make that number make a bit more sense. When I took PowerShell's power away and took on the responsibility myself, it said, I'm going to give you the raw number associated with the page memory. So that's in bytes. And I would have to do some permutations on that to actually get it back to that that uh, kilobytes, I'd have to divide it by um, whatever number I wanted to get me down to that. So we're going to look at that as in an upcoming video on how we can format this output the way we want using our own hash tables if we want. But what I want you to take away right now is that the select object lets me say specific things. So for example, I could actually say I got my process name. Um, let's go back here and do a quick little get service. Took a look at some of the other property or sorry, get process. Take a look at some of the other properties here. Okay, well, I've got a property called uh, handles, page memory, working set, CPU in seconds. I've got an ID, a process name. And if I wanted other pieces from other properties, I could go to get member and find that out. But let's actually do a quick little, let's take a quick little uh, uh, 
resort again. I'm going to say get. Uh, so let's go get property or process. And let's pipe that. Again, I'm going to uh, actually I'll just redo that here with my up arrow. Okay, so let's select a bit more information here. Okay, I want to get process name, page memory. Let's add working set. Let's add ID. And look at I've got a nice table here uh, of of the specific objects that I select I selected. I'm going to show you a quick little behavior associated with PowerShell here. Just a little up arrow to look at that again. Notice I selected four properties. I'm going to select one more. Let's grab our, let's grab another one, our CPU. Okay. And so I'm going to grab that there. It's waiting for me. CPU, got it. And look at this. The default behavior went from a table to a list. Okay. Now you may or may not want that. So when I start selecting these objects, I now have to, to determine whether I want them in a table or a list. By default, if you're up to four properties, you're going to get a table. The moment you hit five properties, most PowerShell sessions are going to drop you into a list format. That's fortunate, easy to fix that again because I could pipe this one more time into a commandlet that would let me format this as a table. And if you're trying to guess what the commandlet is that lets you format your information as a table, and you guess that, you'd be exactly right. You can see now I've gone from the list scenario back to a table that might or might not be what I'm after, but that's a bit more specific. Brilliant. So what you've seen everybody is that I can take a process or a service or, or, or anything and I can sort it, I can select it, I can sort and select, I can add various parameters to assist me and make this information more specific. The last one that I want to take a look at is something we call group object. And group lets me actually take a look at a cumulative number based on a certain property. Okay, so let's go back to my get service. Remember that I had, if I wanted to sort by uh, property of status, Okay, remember this was breaking it between stopped process, stop services and running services. Okay, so that's what that was doing. Now I'm going to actually maybe I wanted to know the, the total number of services here. Well, that's where the group object command that comes in. Let's uh, instead of piping it to sort, let's pipe it over to group object. Again, I have a property parameter and because there's a property associated with get service called status, I can actually hit that. And now what it's done is it's grouped those objects into one of two statuses, either running or stopped, and it's given me the count. Okay, so what I wanted to show you here is that we can start piping this information into a variety of other uh, commandlets that actually help us get more specific information. We can do this with event logs, we can do this processes, we can do those services. And once we isolate what we're after, we can then carry on with more manipulation if the situation called for it. What you now know is that a combination of commands gives you a bit more power. You can sort information that's fed into in a pipeline. You can feed pipeline information to the sort object um, and you can select specific properties that you want using the select object. You can use these in tandem. You could select a certain property and then sort by that property or you could sort by the property and then select what you want as a result. And then finally that group object is a nice handy one to help you assimilate all the, pro all the objects that contain a consistent property within it. Now remember, um, these are um, usually feeding something into these. These would not have the, uh, the, the ability to, to output something on their own. I would feed uh, another command into those to make those work. But once you start manipulating those, you can do all sorts of cool things with it. Hope that helped. We're going to see you in the next video.